this morning I'm on the Hiawassee River working my way across the river there's a nice hole just on the other side of this little island a deep one they're not generating upstream right now got a couple of hours it's a pretty morning nice and overcast so maybe we'll catch us something got the old waders on if you ever get into this use the felt get the felt bottom soles on your waders rubber is useless out here you will fall and bust your ass many a time believe me i've done it before these rocks can be slick it can even be treacherous in the with felt on the bottom of your feet let's see you can see how clear the water is it's a clean river up here let's make our way over there another view of how clear the water is Whenever they're not generating, it's just a maze of rock and some islands. It's about 62 degrees right now. Well, let's sneak over here, see if we can do any good. Little rainbow here. Probably about eight inches long, nine inches long. Just a little guy. Put him back here. It's good to get out every so often and walk around barefooted grounds you makes you feel good if you've been following me on telegram i've shown some videos about the garden's progress got some spinach here it's probably ready to harvest it's actually about the flower so probably need to start harvesting it might do that here in a minute but i figured i'd just make a video for youtube some gardening and fishing I got uh, Cherokee purple tomatoes here. Can't recommend them enough. Extremely flavorful. I'll have to stake them here soon. This is a Cherokee purple. Uh, let's see, right there. We call that a sucker. If you want to prune your tomato, you just pull that right there. When it grows up in between the stem. That little extra leaf pluck that thing it's drawing energy from your plant that could be used to uh, produce fruit with see there's another one right there see that now something interesting if you need more tomatoes you can actually stick this in the ground and it'll grow because that's what this tomato is Right when I got these tomatoes, there was a sucker. Pulled it off and look what it's grown into. So, you just stick it down in the ground, it'll form roots and uh, it'll take off. This is a cherry tomato right here. You can see they're already blossoming, flowering. You don't have to stake these because, you know, the tomatoes on them are tiny. Cherry tomatoes. And let's go over here. These are also Cherokee purple. Let's see if they've got a sucker. Yeah, I see one already there. Look at that sucker. Pluck that thing off. Pluck that thing off. See, here's a little one. Just a little one. Pluck it off. All you gotta do to prune your tomatoes, pluck those little, look where the stems separate, where they divert, pluck them off. If it's right at the crook, it's right at the crook, that's where you pluck them off at. Look at this one here. 
Um, let's see, there's a little one right there at the crook. Pluck it off. And if you need more tomatoes, stick it in the dirt. Stick it in the dirt and it'll it'll grow. Uh, let's see here. All right, but yeah, these are both Cherokee purple. What I do is I'll mulch. I push mow my yard. I know Varg wouldn't approve of mowing, but uh, I hate mowing myself, but uh, I do like how it looks. Look, there's a weed popping up. But what I do is I put a bag on the back of that push mower and every so often and collect the clippings. And then I throw it in here on top of my bed, on top of the soil. Keeps you from having to weed as often. Um, and it's good for the soil too. It's just natural mulch. Use use what you got. These are Beauregard sweet potatoes. I grew some huge sweet potatoes in this thing last year. Real big ones. Massive. I've got six of them here. This is just one of those things like you can put this and burn stuff in it. I already got a burn pile back there. You can't see it because of the trees, but uh, once again, just use use what you got. Over here, I built a new raised bed just a couple weeks ago. I got a compost pile out in the woods out there. These are straight eight cucumbers right here. They'll spread out. Uh, Clemson okra, Clemson okra, another Clemson okra. This is eggshells right here. I used uh, garden soil, some of my compost back there, and some of the soil here. Put eggshells in there to add calcium to the soil. Add calcium to the soil is a damn good thing to have. It'll prevent your tomatoes from getting the uh, blossom end rot. I put a bunch in there too. Eggshells over the winter. Coffee grounds, things of that nature. Uh, these are uh, bell peppers here. Bell peppers. Let's see, Big Bertha bells, what they're called, I believe. And this one's a purple bell pepper. I've never tried to grow one of them. I always had trouble back home growing bell peppers for some reason. I could grow banana peppers or jalapenos like no problem, but uh, I always had difficulty with bell peppers. But the last two years, I've got quite a few of them been pretty successful at it down here I'm gonna try to build one more raised bed this is a bag of leaves compost here what I'll do is when I build a raised bed I put a bunch of leaves on the bottom and just put the compost and the soil on top of it you know you build your box first and uh, these leaves will decay along with the grass that's under it just build it up yourself. Use what you got. We got plenty of trees back here in the backyard. Let's see. This right here is a sawtooth oak. And you can see the close-up of what the bark looks like. They call it a sawtooth because of the little uh, serrations on the edges of the leaves. I don't know if that's the correct term, but I think you get what I mean. And then over here... This is a mocker nut hickory tree. It's a type of hickory tree. One of the two types that grow down here, southeast Tennessee. The other, uh, shagbark hickory. That's another uh, prominent uh, species of hickory tree that grows down here. These are the, t but these mocker nuts and these uh, sawtooth oaks, those are the two uh, species of trees that we have here in the backyard. We've got some post oak back there in the woods. Some white oak too. Over here we got some strawberries. They started out in a hanging basket and then I put them in this container. See they're blossoming, pink blossoms. Starting to form. Right here I got Brussels sprouts. I absolutely detest Brussels sprouts but my wife likes them. So I planted, planted one. I, I got this, uh, raised this from seed. Here's a cabbage, raised it from seed. The carrots, raised from seed. Stuck them in these containers here. 
And then I go over here. This is my raised bed with my crook neck squash. These are all crook neck right here. Just stuck the seed in the ground and a few weeks back and look where they're at now. I also mulch this raised bed. I'll have to do this one here soon, next time I mow. And then right here, these are just zucchini, green zucchini. Right there's some lemon balm. It's kind of like mint. You can put it in water and tea, or you can just chew it. That's usually what I do with it. Wife uses it in tea or her water sometimes. It's got a lemony taste. Hence, they call it lemon balm. And these are my potatoes here. These are Kennebec potatoes. And I tried out these growing bags this year. They even got a little thing here. I guess whenever the potatoes really start popping, you can look in there and see them. But what you do, now I've got potatoes here too. These are all Kennebecs. And uh, what you do with potatoes, when you grow them in a garden, you, uh, you heal them, which basically you plant them in a row, they sprout, and uh, you get a hoe. And I'm not talking about a hooker, I'm talking about a farm implement. Heck, man, if you get you a hooker, you know, either you plow her, maybe, uh, maybe she could help you plow if you pay her extra. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was, that was a feeble attempt at uh, making a funny there. But what you do is, if I can chew up this lemon balm, spit it out, you know. Um, when I first planted the Kennebec, the seed, the seed potato, I filled it up to about right there, about five, six inches of, of uh, soil. Sprouted, started to grow upwards. A few weeks later, I filled it up to about here. And then the other day, I filled it up to its current level. What will happen is the potato will grow. See, you heal your potatoes because you know, it's kind of counterintuitive. I've explained this to a few people that wasn't aware. But you want to bury the plant until like the few, just a few inches of leaves and stem is showing. Because it'll keep keep growing potatoes. You can grow you can grow potatoes vertically. And as you can see, they're doing doing fine. One of the advantages of growing these potatoes like this, I know when me and dad would grow them back home up in the garden. We always had to worry about Japanese beetles, potato beetles, and what they do is they'll, uh, they'll eat your leaves, diminish your return, and uh, the parasites, you know. And so far this year, I've not seen a, a single potato bug on these. And these are also Kennebec. I have a, an idea, a system I'm going to rig up to where I can grow these vertically. I'm going to try to do that next week. And lastly, got our onions here. Look at these onions. Got red onions. These are Texas sweet white onions. And as you can see, they're starting to form the bulb. Get that weed out of the way. Look at that, guys. Just throw it over there. What you do when they start to form a bulb, my dad told me this uh, when I went to visit him a few weeks back. When it starts to form a bulb, you scoop away the soil. And as see, there's tendrils. I don't even know if that's a word. But the root is actually at the bottom of the bulb. What you do is you clear it away, and it gives the bulb... Uh, more room to expand so your onions should get bigger. In hindsight, I wish I hadn't planted these potatoes here because they are shading these, but you know, you learn. And plus, if I get that uh, vertical system 
that I've got figured out. Once I get it on here, there'll be more sunlight that comes back to these onions because these potatoes will not be flared out. But uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about the garden so far this year. I'm gonna try to build me another raised bed, but my goal, my goal is to just, of course you know the fence here. Had to, had to build that fence to keep uh, Bocephus there uh, out of my garden last year when I found him. He was almost starved to death up there on the Hiawassee River when I was fishing. There's a little Loki. But he liked to get in here and dig up everything I'd plant, so I built a fence. I'm gonna try to build another raised bed. Hopefully to plant some more cooler weather stuff for the fall in. We'll just see what happens. But I want my entire yard to be edible. I hate living in a neighborhood. I sit to myself, I sit and I think to myself, just how much stuff I could grow if I was just back home. Got a lot more land up there. Don't really have to worry about building raised beds up there. You can put them, put it in the ground, you know. But uh, now I got some fishing for you. I haven't gotten to go fishing anywhere near as much as I would like to this year because I've just been extraordinarily busy. Hopefully that's going to change here soon. I've been working a ton of overtime, trying to make extra money where my daughter's on her way. She'll be here in November. But hopefully be able to find some time to do some more fishing. Hopefully get a couple of decent fishing videos out here soon. So far this year, I've only been able to take uh, short fishing trips, you know only been able to go for an hour or two at a time. I've caught a lot of fish, but nothing spectacular. A lot of a lot of little bass, sunfish, a couple of little trout. I did hook a massive striped bass fishing uh, probably about a month ago on the Tennessee River. I fought with it for about 30 seconds, but my little lightweight rig wasn't no match for it. It came up out of the water. I got it to the surface for a minute. And it was about... It, it was massive. It was huge. I'm not sure how much it would have weighed, but... I lost it, of course. And, uh... It's just a fisherman's tail. Unless I get a picture or a video of it. Eh, didn't happen. But anyways... Uh, this is just one of the tenets of becoming self-reliant, I believe. Produce what you can and deprive the system of having to pay into it, of having to buy things from it, of having to pay taxes. System deprivation is one of the big tenets of what I would consider, you know, cold revolution. Thank y'all for watching. Bye bye. Another large mouth. I hope it ain't the one I caught earlier. I caught this one on the blue Bobby Garland. The other one I caught on that shallow shad wrap. I don't think it's the same one as. I hope not. He's having a bad day if that's the case. Let's let him go. There you go, buddy. Got us a little large mouth here. Let's let him in here. Not a big guy. Not bad, but kind of fat. Over here at Savannah Bay today. Not far from the house, 10 minutes from the house. Trying some catfishing, but uh, ain't had no catfish bite yet. It's about to give up fishing. Hadn't caught nothing in the last hour, and just got this big yellow perch. 
Let's see how big he is. That thing must be, I don't know if it's pregnant or what. Look how fat it is. Uh, let's see. I'll wear a size, of, a size 11. Look at it, that thing must be pregnant. Let's get it off here. Yeah, that's a good size perch right there. I think in Tennessee, if they're over 11 inches, it's trophy size. Caught it on old shallow shad wrap here at North Chickamauga Creek. About where it runs into the, probably just half a mile or a mile up above where it runs in Tennessee River.